All right, everybody. Welcome back to another video, and today we're going to be talking about Matt Walsh. I know, you guys are all aware of him at this point if you watch my content. I feel like I have a tendency to kind of unnecessarily give background to certain discussions like this. Like, I'm pretty sure most of you are aware of Matt Walsh, so instead of, like, explaining who he is... I think instead, I'm just going to, like, explain why I hate him in a way that also explains who he is in case you don't know who he is, right? And also, this may uh, also act as, like, a, uh, a list of reasons why any potential Matt Walsh fans watching should no longer be Matt Walsh fans. Fat Walsh. <laughs> okay. That said, though, um, Matt Walsh works for the Daily Wire. And he is a stooge who has probably taken tens of millions of dollars in conservative dark money in order to push the, like, red right-wing party line. And that party line basically morphs and changes with the culture war over time. But, like, you know, you can literally see uh, that there is no genuine sincerity in anything that he stands for, anything that he argues for, anything that he says or claims. He is just a political mouthpiece, a puppet that the Daily Wire pays a whole lot of money to use his char like charisma, which he does have. He has charisma, at least as far as conservatives are concerned, to use his charisma and his other qualifying traits, you know, being a media pundit, to push right-wing propagandistic drivel down people's throats and people just eat that shit up he's also just kind of like a, a really huge weirdo um he's said multiple times that like the age of consent being 18 years old is like a liberal like construct centered around the idea of like uh, extended, uh, 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 you know, like this, this child, like, I think the way he described it is using kid gloves to treat young adults, they need to be getting married if they're going to get pregnant, like, so he also said that 16-year-old girls who get pregnant via rape or incest shouldn't be able to get abortions, like, a lot of really horrible shit, I think he also said to, yeah, he says young adults, that's his dog whistle word, but, like, I think he also said, um, he violates his kid's consent all the time, when reviewing a children's book called C is for Consent, which basically just explains that, uh, like, you shouldn't do things or, like, impede on people's personal space, etc., without asking first. And if you ask and get a no, then you can't do it. Like, it's basically just explaining the concept of empathizing with other people's boundaries and, like, caring about consent to children. And Matt Walsh was like, this is the worst thing ever. So he's a massive creep. And in the meanwhile, right, he's using uh, the most common conservative anti-trans uh, talking point out there right now, which is to um, claim that it is, in fact, the left and trans people who support pedophilia and grooming of children, which is really ironic when you consider the fact that overwhelmingly it is the right that is in favor of this, whether it be the Catholic Church, whether it be their defense of the concept of, like, they, they, they literally, part of their ideology is the idea that young women need to be getting married and having babies. Like, it, it's just a lot of what conservatism stands for is inherently pedophilic and groomery, which is why it's so clearly projection when the right, like, lobs that accusation at trans people or at the left broadly. Anyway, if that didn't explain who Matt Walsh was to anybody who has who doesn't know, then nothing can. And frankly, I think it did a good job of explaining why I don't like the guy. But something new has come out recently. A couple days ago, a few days ago, actually, I'm a little late to this, uh, a clip uh, was posted on his Twitter from his show where he said, your choice to transition is not merely personal or private. It will, it will have a devastating effect on your loved ones. You owe it to your family to live in reality. Now, Matt Walsh has moved the goalpost as far as his public engagement with the trans issue uh, is concerned for a while now. Look at any Daily Wire host three years ago. Most of the things they were complaining about were like trans people in sports and like kids maybe in some reality getting bottom surgery at some point if like the if mistakes are made 
in treatment like that was like they basically said but what if that what if this like they didn't really have they weren't willing to outright say this or that is happening it was a very subtle and dishonest dog whistly kind of transphobia like three or four years ago do you guys remember that like when it was a lot more low-key a lot more mask on hatred towards trans people has gotten a lot more acceptable particularly online and it's also gotten a lot more profitable and uh you know it draws the clicks now there's an entire community of people online much like back during gamergate there was an entire community of people online dedicated to hating feminism and consuming content dedicated to hating feminism there is now an entire community of people who have dedicated themselves to consuming content and engaging with content centered around hating trans people does that make sense to you guys? Both of them are equally dumb, but one is, I would argue, uh, a little bit more mask off and, like, openly hateful than the other. Like, at least when it was, like, anti-feminist, it was it was never, like, openly anti-woman for the most part. Like, they, they would be openly anti-woman, the worst of them, but they were usually mask on enough that they, they would claim, we don't have a problem with women, we don't like feminism. That's the issue we have. But now... It's gotten to the point where you have Matt Walsh claiming that trans people are, like, an active threat to civilization. And if you look back to, you know, just three or more years ago, these figures were saying things like they don't care what you do if you're an adult or in the privacy of your own home. They don't care if you identify as trans or if you don't push on it. Like, all that stuff, right? They would do the basic, like, if you're an adult, you can do what you want. Uh, you know, I'll respect your freedom. Now, though, transgenderism has to be eradicated. That's coming from the mouth of these Daily Wire hosts. That is their opinion now. And it's because over time, we've seen hatred of trans people get progressively more and more uh, acceptable. Hey, Abby Gretel. All right. So let's go ahead and watch this clip from Matt Walsh. Apparently, uh, this is him freaking out about how trans people existing is actually cruel to trans people's families if their families are transphobic because... Uh, how dare you, I guess, you know, like, I can't really even explain what reasonable thought process would lead someone to this position. You just have to be evil to think what Matt Walsh is about to say. This is why we need to call more attention to the callous, narcissistic dis- Oh, I just realized this is really quiet. There we go. This is why we need to call more attention to the callous, narcissistic disregard that the gender ideologue has for his own loved ones. This is, as I said, a central feature of the ideology. There's a reason why so many of uh, transgenderism's most prominent mascots are, you know, grown men who quote transitioned later in life and intentionally destroyed their marriages and families in the process. One of my favorite things about this is that people like Matt Walsh, the people in Matt Walsh's political sphere, repeatedly keep on ruining their like social lives by holding these political views. Not even holding these political views, but obsessively holding these political views. I believe it was um, Glinner, the British comedian, uh, comedian, I guess, I don't I, I don't find him particularly funny, the British comedian who, uh, I just realized I'm really out of frame, <laughs> I'm really out of frame on my uh, camera here. I'll have to fix that after uh, this segment. The British comedian that decided to be like a big JK Rowling dick rider and go full turf and all that, uh, he was so obsessed with hating trans people that uh, his wife left him and took the kids. Oh, thank you for reminding me, chat. Like, his wife literally left him and took the kids. And he, and like, people just, just meme on him about it nonstop these days. It's really, really funny. It, 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 it is. It is really funny to see such a, to see people who dedicate themselves to being like hateful pieces of shit, like to have that kind of comeuppance, right? Because in a just world, nobody who behaves in the way that Glinner did should have anybody in their lives who cares about them. D does that make sense? Nobody like Glinner, who says and believes the things he does, should have familial or friend support, right? I, I feel like they've kind of just become a bad enough person they don't deserve it anymore. Maybe I'm a bit too cruel. I, I am a bit spiteful towards people like this. And he's British, so, like, I particularly am rooting against him. But, you know, my bigotry and racism aside, you know, this is how I feel. Take Rachel Levine, for example, 65 years old today. That means he, de he decided to, quote, come out as a woman in 2011, which means that he was in his early 50s, you know, when he made that decision. 
Okay, so for the record, there's no actual arguments going to be made here against, like, being trans. To be clear here, like, the whole point of conservative anti-LGBT propaganda at this point is to make anti-LGBT entertainment. Does that make sense? It's not about spreading arguments or reasons for why one should be anti-LGBT. Being anti-LGBT or homophobic or transphobic is a given within these communities now. The argument, uh, or I guess the point of these videos now, is to provide entertainment to an audience who agrees with these values, right? So this video is mostly just going to be, like, blatant, like, cruelty towards trans people. Like, that's really probably all it's going to be. So if that is upsetting to you, then, yeah, I'm sorry. Meanwhile, I will be fixing my camera while I respond to this video as best I can. Yeah. I don't know if my chat can hear uh, the burn that you just gave, Matt Walsh, but I'm going to let them know. Hey, chat, my mom just said um, just a fantastic burn on Matt Walsh. I think she said, why does he look like someone asked AI to create an image of a disappointing man. She's watching the stream in the other room and she walked up to yell that through the door. <laughs> For the record, by the way, my mom has had no idea who Matt Walsh is before, uh, you know, seeing the, like, the stream in the other room. So, there you go, chat. There's a normal person's interpretation of seeing Matt Walsh talk and exist. He had a wife who he'd been married to for years. He had two kids. <laughs> Putting everything else aside, just think about how unfathomably selfish you have to be, how uncaring. And Do you guys remember when it was like, this is the same argument made about like gay dudes who figured it out like later in life? Because there, there's a lot of gay guys who don't figure out that they're gay until they're like, you know, pretty far along in life, all things considered. And, uh, you know, they might have kids, they might have, like, uh, they, they have kids, a wife, etc. Like, all that all that good stuff, right? And it's like, ah, shit, turns out that person's gay, and they aren't into women. They've just now kind of figured that out, or they've just now come to terms with that. Like, th this has been a thing for a long time, and conservatives have always been, like, uh, have always tried to find some way to make LGBT people who only figure it out later in life and have already kind of lived through their life in a position where they haven't figured themselves out yet, feel bad for, like, coming out and existing as who they truly are. That's been that's been a thing for a long time. Like, this stereotype of, like, the older guy, you know, what married, has kids, figures out he's gay, and, and like, yeah, like, that's... It's been a thing for a long time, that kind of, like, stereotype. And heartless to tell your wife that her husband is... For the record, the only solution to this is like homosexuality, being trans, etc., being more well known and accepted in society, because that means more trans and gay people figure out they're trans or gay while they're younger, and they don't end up being like in their 30s or 40s with a wife and two kids before they figure out that they're trans or LGBT or whatever. And like they like like if you if that's a concern to you, then wouldn't you agree that it's best to make being LGBT much more widespread like known and accepted the answer to that is no because the only con like constant in what these people believe or what they'll say i should say is uh whatever makes trans people the most miserable and hurts their feelings the most that is all these people believe it's like to be clear all matt walsh is trying to do here is say things that hurt trans people's feelings there's no arguments here it's just like content entertainment for transphobes gone and now she has to get used to being married to a woman and guess what you're in a lesbian relationship now what fuck yeah whether you like it or not and to tell your children that their father is gone they no longer have a father their father is dead um only if you have your way matt walsh uh it, it's it's i mean the the data is pretty Cut, cut and dry on the fact that transitioning helps gender dysphoria and uh, significantly decreases the likelihood of suicide, su suicidal ideation, depression, etc. Not only that, but support from friends and family even more so uh, compounds on this. 
It is people like Matt Walsh that stand defiantly in the way of lowering trans suicide and depression rates. So, like, to be, like th these people, th they know this. They know this is true. That's why they behave the way they do. Bars. And now they must simply accept that they have two moms. Consider how disastrously self-absorbed you must be to put this... D don't these people claim that it's, like, moms that are the ones that are meant to be raising kids because they're more, uh, like, biologically ordained by God, designated to do child-rearing? Isn't that what these people believe? Wouldn't two moms be better? Wait, no, because these people also believe... That if you're raised by a woman only, then you'll become a woman and you have to be raised by like a father figure too. I forgot. The, these people are really weird. I bet this guy believes exactly what Jesse Lee Peterson believes, where it's like, oh, you're, you're half man, half woman because you were raised by a mom and dad. <laughs> Who remembers that? When Destiny said that he's equally close to his mom and dad, and Jesse Lee Peterson responded, So you're half man, half woman? <laughs> With a fully straight fucking face. God, that man is a treasure. To wait. This burden on your family, on those who depend on you. But what is Levine supposed to do? Is he supposed to suppress his deepest desires and live as a man, even if he doesn't feel like one? Even if it makes him uncomfortable? Yes, of course that's what he's supposed to do. Yeah, so to be clear, like, the, the smug, like, smile and, like, the getting close to the camera to be all like, yes. It's just, this is just meant to upset trans people. It's the only point. It's just downright, outright cruelty and bigotry towards trans people. And for the record, this video, tons of views on YouTube. Tons of views on YouTube. I've said it many, many times now, and I know that some of my fans get super triggered whenever I talk about, like, liking TOS and liking when Nazis or uh, bigots get banned. But I'm going to be honest, I do like when people like Matt Walsh get banned. Not even just because it's funny or it's good or it's politically effective, because, but because it means the TOS is actually being applied equally. Like, if Matt Walsh got banned, it would make me happy because I've watched as, like, YouTubers who are on the left who are covering Matt Walsh have gotten striked for the content Matt Walsh made being in their video while Matt Walsh's channel remains completely untouched because his is larger and thus has, like, some kind of built-in protection against false or even, you know, accurate strikes. Hell, I think there was a YouTuber, a lefty YouTuber recently, who had a video fully demonetized just for having Matt Walsh's face in the thumbnail. Because it, it, like, marked it as hateful content. Just for having Matt Walsh's face in the thumbnail. Meanwhile, this guy is still not banned on YouTube and is fully monetized. As far as I know, he's fully monetized. But, it, yeah. Ugh. Of course. Now, this may come as a shock to the left. I know it comes as a shock to them. But there are more important things in your life than your desires, especially desires that are so deeply disordered. So th there's really no argument here. It's just like your like your desires don't matter is what he's saying here. Disordered. I don't know. He's just he, he, he thinks that being trans is like a disorder. Like if you're if you're transgender and you feel like you're in the wrong body, then you're like mentally ill. You're a degenerate, mentally ill disorder. Like you have a disorder. That needs to be like, they they believe in conversion therapy as the best treatment. Generally speaking, that's usually their uh, that's usually their go to is conversion therapy, which has never ever been proven to work. In fact, it has repeatedly been proven not to work time and time again. Um, we don't really they don't really push for it for gay people anymore because like been there done that like two decades ago. But uh, now it's like all the rage to advocate for uh, conversion therapy for trans people because like trans people are the new like LGBT group. The right is uh, creating a culture war and like hysteria about your responsibility to your family is one of those things. And now we get to the part that very few people ever say out loud. Um, and I, oh, I have, as you know, many arguments against gender ideology. I've articulated many, all of them many times. I do wish that he was, like, willing to just outright say against trans people. 
What he means is trans people. He says gender ideology every time, and it's a dog whistle, because he, he can't... It's a little bit too cruel to just outright say these trans people. Like, I've been fighting against trans people. I've been fighting against the, the trans rights. Like, he can't say trans rights or trans people, which is what he's actually fighting against and, and attacking. He has to say gender ideology, this made-up term that's just a... It's just a dog whistle for trans people existing. That's pretty much it. Times. But here's another point in addition to those that needs to be acknowledged. You know, as we know, you cannot be any sex other than the one you were born as. Any attempt to transition is ultimately doomed to failure. Uh, it well, I'm afraid the entire medical and academic consensus disagrees on that. And uh, that is why none of you Daily Wire stooges do scheduled debates with anybody who knows how to debate anymore. Because all of the things you claim have gotten so sensational, you would be... Like, a fucking five-year-old could wipe the floor with you on these topics, given, like, 30 minutes to do research. Like, I'm not even kidding, by the way. Like, it doesn't take that much time to read the research on the consensus on this. Like, there there are very consolidated uh, platforms. There, there are platforms that have done a very good job of consolidating all of the data and studies and research and medical science around all of this to give you a very good understanding of, like why gender transition is the best option for people with gender dysphoria. And there is also very good, um, like, resources that have kind of argued why gender, the social construct of gender, isn't and has never really been this, like, binary uh, set-in-stone thing. I mean, for a long time it hasn't. It fails before it even begins. But also, not only do you have no choice but to be the sex that you are, you also have the responsibility to accept that fact. I, I really don't know what else to say other than these people have just devolved to, like, villain speeches. Like, I, I don't know what I'm supposed to say in response to... Well, it would be like if I was watching a video of a guy just ranting about how he wants slavery like I, I need you guys to understand this is this level of political engagement in probably less than a decade a decade max is going to be so taboo it will end careers okay i think you guys may not understand right now but like the level of acceptance of trans people among gen z Despite the fact Gen Z is absolutely a massive target for right-wing right radicalization, um, the acceptance of LGBT identities among Gen Z is quite high. The right knows this. Conservative ideology, as much as they'll try to front like it is, is not popular among Zoomers in America. The, uh, the right knows this. It's why they've been fighting very hard to try to raise the age to vote. They want to disenfranchise young voters that are like 18 and to 18 to 20 um and turning 18 uh coming to like the next election the next uh, year or so um they are very scared of this generation voting the right does not as it exists now probably doesn't have that long going for it like they, they don't have that much going for it in the long term uh every consecutive generation has been more progressive than the last Less of them have voted Republican than the last. And every day, more Republican voters, for the most part, die off. Literally, they die off. And very few are being born or coming into voting age to replace them. This is just a blatant reality of American politics right now. Do, do, does this make sense to you guys? Does anyone here disagree? As far as all the data that I have seen... This is true. Gen Z and all the generations before it have been progressively more progressive, uh, progressively more left wing and acceptive, accepting of like LGBT identities. And I think Gen Z is like much more accepting of LGBT identities than even millennials are. Millennials are uh, the previous generation before Gen Z, right, chat? Like, Gen Z is way more accepting of LGBT people than even uh, millennials from the last bit of data that I saw. So, listen, I'm pulling from data here. I'm just saying it. 
these people realize that there is not much time left to make a career off of hatred this blatant. This is literally like clan leader tier transphobia, if we were to draw like a direct comparison. I don't know how long this is going to last. And I'm so, so excited to watch as this all comes crumbling down, because it will. It will, and it's going to be glorious. It always does. Every time the right gains steam for, like, one of these cultural control shifts that we've seen, it's always less uh, powerful than the last one. It's more crazy than the last one, but it's less powerful and influential than the last one. And they, they lose more ground every time. Just a little bit, but they lose more ground every time things shift back to the left. That said, let's resume. And live accordingly. Okay, a man has the responsibility to live as a man and act as a man and a woman as a woman. You have a responsibility, in other words, to live in reality. I, all I have to say about this is you are a massive cuck if you let this guy tell you how to live your life. Th that's all I have to say. You are a huge cuck if you let this guy dictate how you live your life. YouTubers and online media celebrities or whatever should not be determining what you are, like, what is your responsibility? What should you do? How should you live your life? If you listen to other people who tell you how to live your life, you are a massive fucking cuck. And I have no respect for you. I don't see you as a person. I see you as like an automaton, a robot who's been programmed. You're not a person. We are not atomized individuals living in our own universes, divorced from the next person's uh, reality. We, we have lives that are intertwined with each other. We, in fact, do live in a society, it turns out. We live in a society. Um, no, this is hilarious considering the fact the right has taken every anti-reality position on every single issue uh, that has come up for as long as I can remember. Like... This guy literally, I'm pretty sure Matt Walsh doesn't believe in climate change, man-made climate change, right? Like, that's a pretty basic conservative position to not believe in man-made climate change. That is about as far from, like, reality as it gets. They don't really harp on it as much anymore because they realize it's such a losing issue because 97% of scientists, climate scientists and scientists generally, uh, like, disagree with them. But, like... Or no, I think it's like ninety nine point seven. It's more. It's it's a ridiculous amount. It's like close to a hundred percent. They 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 don't really harp on that issue as much anymore. But as soon as the trans issue is as well known, or the science behind it and the data and whatnot is as well known about it as say climate change, they're gonna have to abandon this issue just like they did climate change, because like climate change denialism does not sell well for the right these days, does it? You guys have noticed that, right? They lost that war when Mr. B started doing Team C's and Team Trees. Hell, Elon, Elon Musk is even forced to kind of, like, weaponize the, uh, like, pro-environmentalist, uh, uh, you know, popularity for his own benefit. Because there's no point going against it. You have to appropriate it. So, I, I don't know. Like, you got to appropriate it. We also live in families, and, and our lives are... Uh, more intertwined the closer we are tied to each other, whether by blood or by marriage. What this means is that when you decide to totally reject the non-negotiable realities of the world, and even to reject your own physical nature, you are not making a neutral decision that affects no one but yourself. You are tied to other- Oh, that's a very interesting goalpost move, or at least an interesting reason for him to, to move the goalpost. So before it was, as long as you're an adult and you're making your own decisions and you decide to be trans, you're not hurting anybody and you're not hurting anybody like by, I guess, I don't know, forcing people to gender you correctly, I guess, is their view of hurting people as trans. Like, then you're, uh, then you're fine. Now, it's if you're an adult, even, and you identify as trans, you are hurting people by being trans. So stop. You're evil by hurting people by being trans. That is my understanding of his argument. 
other people, whether you like it or not, and you are pulling them with you into this dark, twisted, alternate universe that you have constructed. You are imposing it on them. That man in the clip is a father. That is a bond that will forever tie him to his son and forever define both of them. When the son decides to be a woman, quote unquote, he is doing that to his father. He's not just radically changing. For those who don't know, he's reacting to a Dr. Phil clip. We're going to we're going to watch it in a minute. We're going to you're going to see what he's reacting to that has him all triggered here in a minute. And it's it's pretty funny. It's a very funny silver lining to all of this. Changing his own life. He is radically changing his father's life and demanding that his father be OK with it. This is my life, he might say. But it's not just his life. There are many other lives bound up with his life. This is just concern trolling. How many of you guys are not familiar with the term concern trolling? Because I'm sure some of you aren't. Because you fall for it often. I see a lot of lefties fall for concern trolling. Concern trolling. The action or practice of disingenuously expressing concern about an issue in order to undermine or derail genuine discussion. There seems to be a lot of concern trolling in the second half of this article as an example of its use. That is what he is doing right now. He's concern trolling. He's pretending like he genuinely cares about, uh, you know, the lives and the, the makeup of these people's families and whatnot. When in reality, he's just trying to say something that sounds inarguably morally kind as an argument against the validity and the existence of trans people and the rights to exist of trans people life and he is seeking to fundamentally alter all of them. Now, if you were some uh, some sort of uh, immortal being that materialized out of the ether and was passively, you know, floating in space somewhere out near the asteroid belt, that it might be true that your decisions and lifestyle choices don't affect anyone else. Okay? If you're just floating out in space okay. and you and you materialized out there, then you so basically, he's he's trying to argue that no matter how you live your life, existing on Earth means you affect other people. So you have to exist to the standards that conservatives demand. Otherwise, you're a bad person. So to be clear, these are the people who build, who have always built their like their dominance culturally on the idea that they are fighting for freedom. That the left is trying to take people's freedom from them, tell them how to live and whatnot. Meanwhile, this guy is demanding you live the way he tells you to, because just existing on Earth means that you're affecting other people. So you have to live the way that he wants you to live. Imagine this standard applying to anything or anyone else. It couldn't. Not in any, any universe could this standard apply to anybody else. And it sounds like it's a reasonable position. Uh. Yes, then you can rightly say, well, what I do has no effect on anybody else. So what is it to you? But if you're a human being born to human parents, raised in a family and living in a community, then nearly everything you do has an impact on others. And that impact is felt more profoundly the closer someone is to you. So by this logic, by the way, you no one is allowed to be trans and no one is allowed to be gay. Which is, of course, what Matt Walsh is pushing for and what his uh, audience is in favor of at the moment. They don't want they're like right now, a lot of the Republicans are trying to get uh, the Supreme Court to repeal gay marriage. That's what they're after next. Gay marriage. So, yeah. That he is effectively he is purposefully effectively implicitly arguing um that no gay or trans people should be allowed to exist because them existing will bother transphobes and homophobes and thus they are affecting other people if you want to be gay or trans you have to leave the planet i guess for the guy in that dr phil segment his refusal to live as the person that he is his denial of reality his rejection of his basic responsibility as a man, starting with the responsibility to be a man and act as a man and accept the fact that he is a man, 
becomes now a giant. To be clear, by the way, he can say as many cruel statements as he wants. It changes nothing. The person who he's mad about being trans won't untrans because Matt Walsh went on a transphobic rant about him. Like, it's like, it, that's not how it works. You know, like, this, he's just going on a mad, angry rant about someone that he's angry about. And he's triggered. And he's saying the most cruel things he can think of because maybe there's some trans people watching. And, uh... He hopes it'll trigger some trans people, like, but that doesn't change the fact that there's trans people out there. Like, these people aren't going to succeed in achieving the trans genocide they want so badly. Is he talking about, okay, I can't tell if he's talking about a trans woman or a trans man, because these people will, like, deliberately, like, they'll deliberately make it overly confusing as to, like, w what the gender identity is of the person they're referring to as, like, a non-argument. Have you guys seen how conservatives will say, like, he, she, it, they, or whatever, instead of just using the correct pronouns for a trans person? And it's like a non-argument, kind of, like, performative display of how confusing trans people's pronouns are? You guys have seen that from conservative propagandists, right? Where, like, they'll talk about a trans people, a trans person, say, he, she, or something. And it's like, it's meant to be like a, a disingenuous, like, oh, look how confusing these trans people are with their pronouns, right? And it's not an actual argument against trans people, but it's meant to make tr dumb people feel like it is. He essentially does that and makes it impossible to tell what the gender identity is of the person he's referring to, because... Like, he'll say this man, this woman, this person thinks like, I, I can't tell who he's referring to. But yeah, man, there you go. Conservative content is inherently kind of muddy. It makes no sense. Giant cross that everyone who loves him must carry. He has exploded all of their lives so that he can live as he wishes. For the record, the exploding of his family's lives is his family is mad that he's trans and won't respect his identity and so he refuses to or i guess she i don't know i i, I like i said matt walsh is me misgendering now like this, the person in question i haven't seen the clip so we'll watch it in a minute but the person in question is a trans woman from my understanding whose dad is mad about her being trans and so they went on Dr. Phil, and now Matt Walsh is just like, look how selfish this trans woman is to not engage or, like, to disown her uh, parents who don't support her. Like, he's just mad. Now, he may be a victim in his own right, a victim of brain. Start misgendering conservatives. Washing a victim of the lies that he has come to believe, but now he makes victims of his family, of the people who love him the most. And nothing will ever make that okay. Damn. Nothing will ever make being trans okay. That, that's what that means, by the way. Like, cutting through the bullshit and the dog whistles and the euphemisms, that's what he means. Nothing will ever make being trans okay, um, is what that actually means. Uh... Now we have the clip. I haven't seen this clip yet, uh, but apparently this is what he was reacting to. This is the Dr. Phil clip. Is this copyrighted? I bet this is copyrighted, but I have seen a lot of YouTubers react to Dr. Phil on stream before, so... Cherry, do what must be done in the editing realm to make this work. <laughs> I like, I like how the audience is clapping and this guy's literally crying. Holy shit. Wait, I wish I'd started with this. It would have been way funnier if we started with this. He's literally like whimpering. <laughs> the whole audience is, is clapping for her too. Because like the audience are good people for the most part. Or at least like probably meet a bare minimum bar of being a good person. Yeah. <laughs> He's whimpering because now he wants to fuck his daughter. You know, that is true of a lot of conservative dads. 
Yeah, that, that, that is possible. You're, that's not out of the realm of possibility. We know how these people are, these transphobes. Thank you for being here. <gasps> I appreciate it. Tell me what you're thinking and feeling right now, Gary. I'm hurt bad. Listen, I need you guys to remember, conservative parents are getting lonelier, and it's making the right scared. A lot of the, like, audience of, say, Tucker Carlson, for example, are, like, boomer parents and grandparents who don't speak to their kids or grandkids anymore. Or I should say vice versa. Their kids and grandkids don't speak to them because they've, fa like, fallen down the QAnon Tucker Carlson rabbit hole. And, like, every time they have Thanksgiving dinner, they start ranting about how BLM is evil and, like, the trans people are groomers. And it's, like, not very pleasant at the dinner table. And so now they're lonely. Like, there's no way Tucker Carlson gets the amount of viewership he does from people who are having happy, fulfilling lives with families who care about them. Like, that's most of these people are being disowned by their younger family. It's very common. They complain about it incessantly on Twitter. I know that for sure. How many uh, transphobic parents have you seen rant on Twitter about how their trans kid who uh, they refuse to, like, view as the gender they identify as and respect like won't talk to them anymore and they're like suicidal or depressed about it or something and it's like just just respect your trans kids identity I, like it's that easy it, it's that easy clearly you don't love your kid that much really bad <laughs> what do you what do you have to say why his hatred of trans people over, uh, like, overwhelms his own love of his child. Like, fundamentally, that, like, you have to be a really shitty parent, I think, fundamentally, for, like, your hatred of a certain, like, group to overwhelm your love of your kid, right? Like, I feel like love for your kid's supposed to be, like, the, the number one priority of a parent. That's what Matt Walsh would argue. I feel like that's what I think most conservatives would argue if it benefited what they were trying to claim. They're not very honest, so maybe they'd argue the opposite depending on the issue. But generally speaking, I feel like conservatives would agree with that. I just I just want you to know that you didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything wrong. Mm -hmm. he feels she's, like... even, she's even defending him. Like, she, she's even just, like, defending him because she probably feels bad for him at this point. I, I honestly probably would. Like, he is pretty pitiful. The dad is pretty pitiful. Like, pretty pitiful. Like, he's crying on national television about how his daughter is a woman. And he just can't. He just can't handle it. You wouldn't? I think so. I think a lot of people would feel pity. Not like a, oh, I, I forgive you now, pity, but like a, but like a, oh, I still think you're a piece of shit, but, and I pity you kind of pity. You know what I mean? He, he lets you down. He's gone back to the point of, he says, one time for Halloween. Yeah. Uh, talk about that. He dressed up like a girl. I thought it was funny. Okay, Dr. Phil. Y y bruh. Dr. Phil. I get that this is a direct quote, but like... Chimon. At first, no, I certainly don't. I thought it was Halloween. You know, so I just went along with it. Actually pinched him on his behind and said... There it is. There it is. Do you know how many times I've had uh, my ass pinched by a parent intentionally? Zero times. 
I think that's normal to not have like to not have had your ass pinched by your parents. Um so yeah, sounds pretty sus to me, dog. <laughs> like who was it? Who was it in chat that said he's just mad cuz he wants to fuck his daughter now? And I was like, yeah, probably. You know how how big of weirdos these transphobes are. Who said that? Who said that in chat earlier? Flighted Crow? Did you see this already? Were you spoiled on this already? Let's rewatch that bit. Let's get an instant replay on that bit. No, I surely don't. I thought it was Halloween. You know, so I just went along with it. Actually pinched him on his behind and said he made a good looking girl, but I was only joking. He's not a good looking girl. Oh, on national television, bro, on Dr. Phil, dude. Oh, no. I, I think he's done. <laughs> Your Honor, my client was clearly making a joke. He's a very beautiful man. <laughs> okay I feel like that was the perfect the most perfect note theoretically possible to end this on I could not think of a better way to end this listen I know this is a little bit of a generalization alright but most transphobes are sex degenerates okay like real sex degenerates I have found time and time again the only valid, I wouldn't say valid, the only realistic source through which this much hatred can come, like the only way you can be motivated to hate this much is by weird sex shit. Whether it be being a chaser, whether it be having a weird race kink, whether it be like uh, being a cuck. A lot of these conservative types are into like interracial cuckold porn, and so they fearmonger about the real things supposedly happening and that being an issue, I suppose. Like these people and their fears and what they care about are oftentimes driven by weird, latent sexual repression. And you know, I think it's pretty funny because half of their arguments center around the idea that trans people or LGBT people or hell, if they're really crazy, they'll even argue straight up that black men are just like sexual predators too. They argue trans people are sexual predators. They argue that black men are sexual predators. They'll argue that black women are like sexually aggressive and that's an argument for racism. Like they will argue that like sexual predation is a characteristic of any group they want to drum up hatred towards. Haven't you noticed that? You've noticed that, right? Do you guys remember um, why the first uh, ever gun control laws were introduced in America? Back in like the Wild West days, the first ever gun control laws were introduced in the U.S. specifically and exclusively applying to black people particularly black men. The reason for this was, along with these uh, bills that banned gun ownership, like, and, and by the way, this is the time when everybody had a big iron on their hip because, like, you might run into, like, a, a coyote or a grizzly bear or something, like, walking home. So, like, like, like for real, like, frontiersmen, like, like, frontiersmen conquered this land 30 years ago, like, era is what we're talking about here. Um, like, the uh, uh, the the first gun control laws were implemented to disarm uh, specifically black people, and laws also came along with this specifically criminalizing black men sleeping with white women. The reason they did these two things in particular was so that white men who were afraid that a black man was going to steal their white girlfriend or their white wife could, without much of a fight, lynch a black man in the street. 
if a bunch of white guys were scared of some black guy fucking their wives because they're insecure about their tiny dicks, now the black guy doesn't have a gun to defend himself when they want to lynch him. That that's that 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 was the whole like groomer or like predator narrative has has goes back to like racist uh, uh, propaganda too. The same types of people have been arguing the same types of things for a very long time. This is really no different. It's just a new target. That's really all it is. Yeah, they tried to disarm the Black Panthers too. Yeah. They, like, listen, conservatives have always been super pro-gun, except for when black people want to have guns to defend themselves. In that case, it's like, whoa, 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 you can't, you can't arm yourselves to defend yourselves against the things we want to do to you. What, we only want the white people to be armed. We're trying to prep for a race war here. Come on. We're not, we can't say that part out loud, obviously, but, you know, it's why a lot of Republicans are so in favor of gun ownership, but mostly for white people. It's because they think that there's some race war or civil war on the horizon and they want the whites to be armed, not like mostly Democrat voting non-white people to be armed. So, yeah, these people are demons and uh, you shouldn't trust them. You know, uh, make sure you carry around a little uh, batch of pocket salt. You know, just grab like a, a bag of salt from your pantry, pour it out into your hand and put that handful of salt in your pocket. So if you encounter one of these people, you can go pocket salt and just, you know, blast them in the face. And uh, if they start steaming, you know, they're a demon. Uh, yeah, it gives you time to get away from them, too. <laughs>